My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. This is episode number 32 of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at temperature and its measurements. This class promises to be very, very interesting. We shall be explaining temperature and we shall be explaining heat. Before I embark on my procedure, there is something important I really need to let you know. I noticed something. So many persons contacting me for help and for flash learners app activation are those who wrote jam last year and didn't pass. Now, last year, they also saw this emphasis on the app and the videos. They felt probably someone promised them bronze or they feel jam is easy or they will pass or something, something. I always say that those writing jam for the first time they usually have this I don't care attitude or they don't see failure in jam as a reality or you've gone to church or mosque or native doctor and they prophesy that you will pass then you just take hard work for granted it is wrong now many persons now who have not installed the app or who feel exam is close or who are not serious with the videos they will feel don't worry don't worry then when you fail jump or you score low, you begin to say that jump cheated you, jump is cheating, jump is bad. From next year, you wake up to reality. Then you begin to get the app, watch videos, get resources, make payments, and begin to be serious with your life. Then one year is gone, the money you didn't want to spend, you spend it, and a lot of stuff. It doesn't make sense. When someone is telling you something, it is good to listen to coach. Not People or fellow jam bikes who tell you about runs or who tell you this doesn't matter. I wrote jam 2014. I gained admission. I graduated years ago and I studied electrical and electronic engineering. I'm also a content creator, marketer. I do a lot of things, even within and outside academics. I do electrical installation, mechanical wiring. Uh, programming, I do a lot of stuff. So once I teach you, or if you notice my teaching, I teach you concepts, not just a teacher coming to class and say, this is this, no, 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 no. I teach you based on things I do, things I've seen, and things I touch. If you follow this video and the app, you are going to score high. Another popular question is, will following only the videos make me pass? Ladies and gentlemen, if you are following any of the subjects in the series that I am teaching, so long I finish that series, you do not need to use any textbook. You do not need to use any textbook. No. Just the videos and the app is enough. And the, what you are getting is more than any information you will ever get in any textbook. This is something you can actually practicalize. Today, I shall be teaching you heat and temperature. After that, go to any physics textbook you have, wherever, wherever, and compare to the knowledge you've learned here, whether there's anyone that is as detailed, as important, and as rich as that. You won't see. If you see, just comment on this post and let me know. So, temperature and measurements. Use the YouTube description to get a Flash Learner Jam app or visit flashlearners.com or search Flash Learners on your Google Play Store or chat me up for installation and activation. I will guide you. Apart from application, writing jam or any exam, you need a mentor someone to talk to, someone to teach you, someone to tell you something else. Chat me up. Most of you will always be packing your fellow friends who post uh, outside on WhatsApp. Like people like you that, no, in life to go higher, you need to roll with people who are ahead of you, who have achieved what you are yet to achieve. Don't get it twisted. Not everyone writing jam are young persons. Some are already working, some are writing jam for different purposes. Some are already so matured. 
and some have less school for a while. So I'm not referring to those ones. I'm referring to these young ones with this teenage behavior. So know what I'm trying to say. Temperature. Anytime you see temperature, there is something else that comes to mind. It is referred to as heat. Heat. This is why most of books we choose to treat heat and temperature together. They may sound the same, but ladies and gentlemen, there is a big difference, a big dichotomy, a big disparity, a big discrepancy between heat and temperature. The first thing I will say is that temperature is a property. Property of matter. Every matter will have this temperature. Why heat is not a property? Heat is an energy. Physics is the study of matter in relation to energy. Now, you see that temperature has to do with matter and heat has to do with energy. Trying to treat different parts of physics together. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Meanwhile, energy is antimatter. It does not have mass, it does not have it does not occupy space. Example of energy is light. And soon we shall be discussing a topic called waves. Waves focuses on energy. Because a disturbance that may pass through a medium or without medium and it transfers energy from one place to another. Transfer of energy. Particle in the medium are not moving. Matter exists in three major states. Solid states, liquid states, and gaseous states. Example of matter is chalk. For any chalk, you see, it is made up of billions and billions of particles. Chalk or matter is built up of so small particles. This particle or the smallest particle is called atom. So atom is the unit of matter. Just like if you want to say unit of time, you say seconds or milliseconds. Or the unit of life, you say cell. That is how atom is the unit of matter. So you now, the smallest unit of your body or of anything you see around that are matter is atoms. These atoms are so, so small that they cannot exist independently. They combine to form molecules. This is chlorine atom. It cannot exist independently. It combines to form Cl2. This is chlorine molecule. So molecules are built up of atoms or an atom. Which makes molecule the smallest particle of a substance that can exist on its own or that is capable of independent existence. Atoms are not capable of independent existence. However, they are the smallest particle that can exist. These particles or these molecules they have what we refer to as kinetic theory. That takes us back to energy. Energy is the ability or capacity to do work. We have different forms of energy. Light energy, chemical energy. Then we have mechanical energy. Our concern is mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the energy a body or an object possesses due to position and due to motion. If you are standing in one place, or due to height, rather, if you are at a particular height, any height you are, that energy you possess, or that mechanical energy, is potential energy. Once you are moving, or there is motion, the energy you possess is kinetic energy. So, these molecules, they are in constant random motion. Every particle you have, they have molecules which are moving or which may not be moving. This makes temperature to be measure of 
the degree of hotness or coldness of a body. That is temperature. A measure of the degree of hotness or coldness of a body. The degree of hotness or coldness of a body depends on how the molecules are moving. If the molecules of an object or of a body or of a surrounding are moving so, 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 so fast, then the temperature will be high. If the te uh, molecules are moving slower, we therefore say temperature is low. If the molecules are not moving, they are standing still, we have what is referred to as absolute zero temperature. And it is temperature where all motion are said to have ceased, or the minimal temperature that is theoretically possible. Absolute temperature is zero degrees or minus 273 Kelvin. This is absolute zero temperature. Heat, on the other hand, is a form of energy which occurs due to temperature difference. So heat is a flow of energy. If there is fire there, you are here, you put your hand here, you feel hot. Why? The heat is coming to you. And why the heat? Because of temperature difference. If you put an object here, and there is another object here, if this object is hotter than this one, heat will flow from the hotter object to the cooler object. Now, if you have a hot water, and the environment is cold, the water after a while will get cold. Why? The hot object loses heat to the cooler object. So heat will naturally flow from hotter object to cooler object. That is the law of thermodynamics. Now, the unit of temperature is degrees Celsius, Kelvin, or Fahrenheit. For gases or in gas laws, temperature is best measured in Kelvin. If you are given temperature in any other scale or unit, you must convert to Kelvin. How do you convert to Kelvin? You simply add 273. Something else. The unit of heat is joules. Heat is measured in joules. You can see they are basically not the same thing. Something else that the instruments or instruments used to measure temperature are referred to as thermometers. These are instruments for measuring temperature. Now, these instruments, they have various substances in them or materials in them. And these materials are referred to as thermometric substances. This instrument detects or measures temperature depending on the property of these substances used to make them. By the way, there is a lot on the board. If you, if you can't see this board clearly, it's either you downloaded a low quality version from YouTube or you are streaming it on YouTube in a low quality. YouTube gives you option to increase quality. So just click on the video, you see small settings use it to raise the temperature uh, to raise the quality to 720p or 1080p you will see everything crystal clear the way i recorded it the thermometric substances are mercury alcohol all gases platinum wire thermocouple and radiant energy these are the various substances or materials that help thermometers to detect or read temperature to understand these substances or these thermometric substances, we need to look at the various types of thermometers, the various types of instruments used to measure temperature. We see the substances used in them and the principle these substances depend on. The first we shall be looking at is the gas thermometer. Gas thermometer. Gas thermometer works based on the principle that 
Pressure changes with temperature. Pressure changes with temperature. So, the pressure of a fist or given mass of gas is directly proportional to its temperature, provided dash dash is constant. In gas thermometer, the volume is kept constant while the pressure and temperature vary. And the substances used in gas thermometer are obviously gases. Why do we use gases? We use gases simply because of their expansion. Gases expand and contract. With that, we shall be able or we are able to measure temperature. Gas thermometer is actually bulky. Yes, it is so accurate, but it is bulky. It is difficult to use due to constant correction. And it is slow to use. Nevertheless, it is used for sensitive and accurate work. It requires a perfect gas as standard. Now, we know that gases are not perfect. At low pressure, gases we choose to respond, we behave like ID gases at low pressure. But when pressure goes very, very high, you see normal gases, they deviate, deviate from this ideal condition. So, since this requires a perfect gas, we don't have perfect gases. However, we use gases like hydrogen, helium, and nitrogen. Hydrogen and helium are very, very okay. However, helium is preferred as a thermometric substance in gas thermometer. And the gas thermometer is used as standard for every other thermometer that you will see. To measure temperature using gas thermometer, you use the formula. The temperature you are looking for C minus 0 over 100 minus 0 is equals P1 minus P0 all over P100 minus P0. Here you need pressure at 100 degrees Celsius, pressure at 0 degrees Celsius, pressure at 0 degrees Celsius, or initial pressure, then you need the final pressure. These are what you need to answer questions like this. We shall look at questions. The next we have is liquid in glass thermometer. Liquid in glass thermometer, we obviously make use of liquids as thermometric substances. And the liquids used are mercury and alcohol. Mercury and alcohol are used as thermometric substances. However, one of them is preferred. Which of them is preferred and why? Mercury is preferred to alcohol in glass thermometer because one, mercury has low thermal capacity. It can detect little quantity of heat. Two, mercury does not vaporize. Meanwhile, alcohol can vaporize. It is a very good conductor of heat. Mercury allows for wide range of temperature and mercury is transparent. So you can easily see the temperature change or the change in temperature. When temperature rises, alcohol and mercury, they both expand with mercury, no, with alcohol expanding the more. When temperature drop, both mercury and alcohol, they contrast with alcohol contrasting the more. Now, liquids in glass thermometer, examples are mercury or alcohol in glass, or clinical thermometer or minimal and maximum thermometer. Clinical thermometer is under liquid in glass thermometer and it is used to measure body temperature. It is used at home to measure the temperature of the body. It has low range of temperature. It can be used to measure 35 to 43 degrees Celsius, which is the normal human body temperature range. The minimal and maximum thermometer are used to measure the weather let's say temperature of the weather let's put it that way and anytime you are given liquid in glass thermometer the formula for such calculations is c minus zero over 100 minus zero is equals f minus 32 all over 212 minus 32 that is the formula for 
liquid in glass thermometer. Write all these formulas down so that when you see questions or when we are calculating, it will be applicable. Next, we have the thermo thermoelectric thermometer. Thermoelectric thermometer work on the principle of changing EMF between two metals. And it is faster than gas thermometer. And it is more accurate than every other thermometer you can see, except gas thermometer. Which means, comparing thermoelectric thermometer with gas thermometer, thermoelectric is faster than gas, but gas is more accurate than thermoelectric. But thermoelectric thermometer is more accurate than every other guy, apart from gas. And it is used for measuring varying temperature. Which of the following scale? or thermometer is used for measuring varying temperature. It is thermoelectric thermometer and it can be used to measure the temperature of the aeroplane wing immediately the aeroplane lands. Formula for thermoelectric thermometer is C minus O over 100 minus O is equals E1 minus E0 over E100 minus E0. And remember, it works based on the principle of changing EMF of metals so platinum would work here we have bimetallic thermometer it works based on changing the expansion of two metals with temperature you are given two metals how this one and this one respond or change to temperature that is the principle of bimetallic thermometer we have the optical pyrometer it is used or the principle it works on is variation of light intensity with temperature that is radiant energy how light intensity varies with temperature that is the thermometric property of optical pyrometer and they are used for measuring very high temperature which of the following instruments is used for measuring very high temperature optical pyrometer they can measure above 2000 kelvin which all these other guys cannot measure and we have the resistance thermometer. The resistance thermometer works on change in resistance of pure metals. And the thermometric substance used is platinum wire, which works on change in resistance. And it is used for relatively high temperature, at least than some of these guys, except for optical pyrometer. Since it works based on resistance, it is the temperature is C minus zero over 100 minus zero is equals R01 minus R0 over R100 minus R0. It is very large in size and it responds slowly. These are the setback of resistance thermometer. It is about time we look at questions under temperature and its measurements. Before then, how about to look at qualities of a good thermometer, the features of liquid in glass thermometer and how to increase the sensitivity of thermometers. A good thermometer must be accurate. It must be sensitive to changes. Once there is change in temperature, the thermometer should be able to adjust or detect the new temperature. It should have low thermal capacity. It should be able to detect little change in heat or little heat. It must be reproducible. Reproducibility is the ability for you to measure a particular temperature more than one time with a thermometer and get the same result. So you should be able to reproduce that result or to get another thermometer to give you exactly the same result. And it must be suitable for the condition and temperature you are measuring. Then finally, a good thermometer must be consistent. Consistency is another property or feature of a good Thermometer. Now, for liquid in glass thermometer, the features are it must have a capillary tube, it must have a glass bulb, and it must have a thermometric liquid. The thermometric liquid used in liquid in glass thermometer is obviously mercury. And the mercury, it has high expansivity. So it is used to increase sensitivity. There should be liquid of high sensitivity. The glass bulb should be large and thin, and the capillarity tube should have a thin wall and should be uh, narrow. Let's see these jump questions. 
Roma figure one use a liquid with a high melting point. Roma figure two use a liquid of high volume expansivity. Roma figure three use a capillary tube of large diameter. Which of the above best describes how the sensitivity of a liquid in glass thermometer can be enhanced? A liquid in glass thermometer works based on change in volume with temperature. So, to enhance the sensitivity of liquid in glass thermometer, we should use a liquid with high volume expansivity. I think I mentioned it here. Yes, your thermometric liquid should have high expansivity. Option C is the correct option. And the next question says, clinical thermometers are examples of dash. You see that under liquid in glass thermometer, I measured mercury or alcohol in glass, I measured clinical thermometer, and I measured minimal and maximum thermometer. So, liquid in glass thermometer or a clinical thermometer is an example of liquid in glass thermometer. And the liquid used in clinical thermometer is mercury. So, therefore, a clinical thermometer is an example of mercury in glass thermometer. Looking at option A, there is nothing like alcohol thermometer. No. You either say alcohol in glass thermometer or mercury in glass thermometer. Alcohol thermometer itself is not correct. So option D is the correct option here. And a clinical thermometer is different from other mercury in glass thermometer owing to dash. It is owing to the construction of the stem. Option C is the correct option. And here we have a question. The thermometric property of a thermocouple is change in dash. Looking at this thermoelectric thermometer, you notice that the thermometric property is change in EMF. And what is EMF? Electromotive force. So change in electromotic force is a property of a thermocouple, and that is thermometric thermometer. Electromotive force, EMF. The pressure of a constant volume thermometer at ice point is 325 millimeter of mercury and at the steam point is 875 millimeter mercury. Find the temperature when the pressure of gas is 490 millimeter mercury. Pressure of a gas of a constant volume thermometer. They already told us that it is a gas thermometer and a constant volume thermometer. So this is obviously a gas thermometer. And gas thermometer works based on pressure change, change in pressure. And I told you the formula for gas thermometer is C minus zero. That is just C over 100. Because the temperature we are looking for minus zero is the temperature. And 100 minus zero is 100. This is P1 minus P0 over P100 minus P0. Now it says at ice point. At ice point, temperature is zero degrees Celsius. And it says at steam point. Steam point is when water is already boiling, changing from liquid to gas. That is 100 degrees Celsius. So instead of saying zero degrees Celsius, they said at ice point. And instead of saying 100 degrees Celsius, they said at steam point. So looking at this carefully, this is it. The pressure at ice point is P0. P0 is equals 325 millimeter of mercury. The pressure at steam point is P100. P100 is equals 875 millimeter of mercury. Now find the temperature when the pressure of gas is this. This is the temperature we are looking for. And the, when you say find when the pressure is this, the pressure will, is this is the P1 we are looking for. If they say find the pressure 
when the temperature is dash this is the temperature they gave you and this is the pressure you are to look for now the pressure given is or p1 is 490 millimeter mercury substituting you have c over 100 is equals p1 minus we even have p1 set p1 is 490 minus p naught is 325 minus 325 over p100 is 875 minus p naught 325 from here you'll be able to get your temperature now let's see the next question the resistance of a platinum wire at the ice and steam points are 0 0.7 ohms and 1.05 ohms respectively determine the temperature at which the resistance of the wire is 0 0.9 ohms we are obviously dealing with resistance thermometer before then if you got 30 degrees celsius here you are correct and to convert 30 degrees celsius to kelvin add 273 that will give you 303 kelvin or 30 degrees celsius here since we are dealing with resistance thermometer the formula is the temperature minus zero the temperature remains over 100 minus zero 100 this is equals r1 minus r0 over r100 minus r0 r0 or r0 is the temperature at ice point r100 is the temperature at steam point or at 100 degrees celsius so from the question c is what you are looking for the temperature over 100 is equals r1 is the given temperature the resistance rather determine the temperature at which the resistance of the wire is a so the given resistance is r1 and that is 0 0.9 ohms minus r0 is temperature at ice point and we are given ice temperature at 0 0.7 ohms so this is minus 0 0.7 ohms all over at steam point the resistance is 1.05 ohms so you put 1.05 ohms here minus r naught which is also the resistance at ice point 0 0.7 0 0.7 solving that you should get c to be around 50 ohms or so ladies and gentlemen this is our calculation questions come under temperature measurement when you hear ice points it means temperature at zero degrees celsius when you hear steam it means temperature at 100 degrees celsius and the last sentence is always the r1 or the p1 or the e1 as the case may be depending on the thermometer you are dealing with so install the flash do not jump up and begin to play with further questions we come to the end of temperature and its measurements subscribe to this channel if you love what you are seeing see ya in the next episode